I came to Rwanda with my husband in September 49, and it was so incredibly beautiful. I just couldn't believe it. Many things happened. There was Congo independence with Europeans being killed. There was a, a civil war in Rwanda. My husband and I were not very happy together. And in the end, he decided to go back to England. And I decided I never wanted to leave this area. And there I stayed with all kinds of ups and downs, but enormous happiness in between until the genocide occurred in Rwanda in 1994. With the rebels approaching, the extremist Hutus unleashed... I refused to leave to start with. I said, I'm not going to leave Africa. This will stop. But I telephoned my farm, and I was told that Sembagari, who was my head man and friend, had been killed. And when I heard that news, I decided to leave Africa for good. I stayed with very, very dear friends on a beautiful Napa Valley vineyard. I had a television right next to my bed, and all day long I watched CNN showing pictures of what was happening in this country I loved so much, where I had been at that time for 40 four years. In the meantime, I had had the glorious news that Sembagari was still alive, and I knew I had to come back. Everything in the house where I had lived for over 40 years had been stolen. My gardeners and Sembagari were refugees, and when they heard I had returned, they all came back and I told them that I had decided to have an orphanage on my farm. And they were very happy about that, and everybody began to help me. My entire resources at that time was $6,000, and it cost $3,000 to fix this old building up. Sembakari said, we have to have Rwanda mothers to take care of these children. I began to panic. I thought I'll never be able to pay them. I'll never be able to buy enough food. But Sembagari said to me, God wants us to do this, madame, and I'm sure money will come. This is one of our mothers. Her name is Kimero. And it did come, really miraculously. Each time I thought I'll have to give up, I would receive a check from somebody to help me. My name is Fidel. My name is Desi. My name is Manuel. This orphan doesn't have anyone. No? Yeah, their parents were killed during genocide. If she was not here, most of them would be street children. Noel C. Manor, at the time that this happened, was eight years old. They killed his father, mother, grandfather, and older brother in one day. The little girl has absolutely no idea what happened or any memory. For Sibyl Manor, he never forgets it. Juste, <laughs> there are so many stories, and they're all so dreadful that they seem totally unbelievable. With Mrs. Carr, they've got a new parents who help them in everything that a parent could, can do. I wanted children all my life. All right. Right. And then suddenly I have a chance at the age of 82 to take care of Rwanda children, and I feel so privileged. I haven't made any sacrifices. I've done exactly what I want to do because I love them so much. Almost everyone here go to school. The school are paid because of Mrs. Carr. Yes, he's paying for everything, clothes, shoes, food, yeah, everything. The kids seem to me to be very, very happy, really happy. Just an old lady who's lucky enough to be able to take care of children. I am so happy, so very happy.